Hello everyone, Rex here. My studio office is a major disaster. Look at this mess. I mean, it's like, yes, I'm a kid in my candy store. I've got all kinds of stuff going on with my vinyl cutters and my computer, my filming stuff and more stuff coming in, spring, what do you call, screen printing things and wow, I'm telling you, it is crazy in here. I still have this drawing that I need to complete uh, my series on. Uh, you want to check out how it looks so far? There you go. So, I mean, today, Saturday morning, uh, I've got a lot of stuff to do to clean up this office. Because in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a t-shirt that I'm going to use fabric paints on and my own little stencil using freezer paper. So, let's get to it. You know what? <laughs> I'm in an arts and crafts mood today, and not only that, but I am in the mood to make myself another t-shirt. I love t-shirts that have stuff on it, and I don't really care so much about buying them like this one right here, but this was actually given to me as a gift, so I like it because it was a gift. I like gifts. Who doesn't like gifts? But as far as buying a t-shirt, going out there and, and uh, you know, spinning the bucks, unless it's got something on it that I want, like it's something that I support or uh, something that I think is like super cool, uh, you know, maybe you're a Mustang fanboy or something like that, then yeah, definitely. Or it's a sports team. I mean, yeah, I've spent money on Laker shirts and stuff, even though I... I do make some of my own. But overall, having your own design, your own concept, your own ideas, and having it on a shirt that you made, I mean, come on, that is cool, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I've got some fabric paints laying around the house here. Well, actually laying around the office. My wife wouldn't allow that stuff in the house. And I'm going to put it on a shirt. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do using some freezer paper. Uh, I'm going to use my vinyl cutter uh, to cut out my design on that freezer paper. We're going to slap it down on a 100% cotton t-shirt. And then I'm going to use fabric paints. And I'm going to add some color. And we're just going to do it from start to finish. Let's get going. This is too much talking. Okay, I got this image um, from the internet. I just did a search on a bunch of keywords like uh, clip art and t-shirt design and all kinds of things. And I'm not quite sure what I finally typed in to find this. But anyway, I found it, downloaded it, put it in my Photoshop. And what I had to do is clean it up quite a bit. It was uh, it had all kinds of goofy gray things in there and stuff. So um, since this is not a Photoshop training video, and I'm no Photoshop expert and unqualified to even teach a Photoshop thing, I'm not going to go through much here except just to say that this is the image we're going to use. And uh, at this point, uh, I'm going to go ahead and save it. Okay, so what I've decided to do is I'm going to import that image into my Silhouette Studio so that I can just have it cut on my Silhouette Cameo 3 vinyl cutter. Uh, I was going to go and go the X-Acto knife route, but I feel there's just too many small little details that I don't really want to monkey around with in X-Acto knife, even though it is doable. But hey, if I've got a cutter, might as well use it, right? So I'm going to import that picture 
that that works. Okay, good. There it is. Now, the paper I'm showing here is uh, 11, a little bit under 12 inches wide and 12 inches down. My mat, I have a 12 by 12 mat. I'm going to utilize most of that mat. Um, you can see I have it set here on my cutting mat. So I'm going to make my um, my paper fit that as well. So I'm just going to increase this to 12 by 12. There we go. And I'm going to select my image. I'm going to slap it down here in the middle. And then I'm going to size it because I want to make a nice big image for my t-shirt. I think I think that looks pretty good. It looks like it's nine and a half inches that way and 10.3 inches that way. See, it tells you here, which is really nice. I think I'm going to squeeze a little bit more out of that just for giggles. The little red, you see this red area right here? This is because I'm showing the cut border. So that just tells me how far I can, I can make my image here. So there we go. I think that looks pretty good. All right. Now, the next thing you have to do with this software here is um, you need to trace this. Now, I am no expert on how to use this thing. I wear so many hats, it's just ridiculous. But I'm going to go to the trace here. It says trace selected area or select trace area. So I'm going to select it and it gives me these crosshairs. And I'm going to go like this to select. There we go. And it's set for, let's see, you got you can trace, trace the outer edge. It will only trace this outer edge. I don't want that. Or trace and detach. I've never used that, so I don't know what that is. So I got this thing for trace. And I clicked it. And so now if I was to... Um, move my image, the trace part should still be there. Let's see here. Yeah, see, you can see all the stuff that it's going to cut. And I can take a look at this and make sure that it looks pretty good. See, there's a lot of detail here. So I want to make sure that uh, it's only going to cut what I want it to cut. And in this case here, it looks pretty good. All right, so... I just move my image off to the side. I don't really need it right now. Okay, the next thing I need to do is I need to get my uh, Cameo here, the machine set up. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so I cut out a piece of 12 by 12 freezer paper. And it's just regular freezer paper. And you know, you buy at the store, you know, like this Reynolds here. And I use my paper cutter to cut this out. Okay, and there I have it on my little uh, sticky board here that comes with the uh, Cameo. Uh, this one here I think I bought uh, as an extra. You got to try to get all these air bubbles out. So, you know, just make sure you press down the best you can. Um, I'm just kind of a goof and I mess up a lot, but you know, I think I'll come out all right. So let's try this out. All right, so the next thing I do is turn on the La Machine, and it's going to make all kinds of tucka tucka noises and stuff when I'm ready to do my thing here. But don't worry, that's normal. And I'm going to line this up, do this line over here. See, so lift that up so I can get this in here right. Okay. All right. And I'm going to click load. All right. So that's all ready. Now I'll just send a, a job and I'm going to send the cutting over to it. Okay, so now that I have that uh, mat loaded up with the freezer paper stuck on it, I'm going to go over here to the send. And there we go. Okay, and you can see it, it has what it's going to cut out here. And I need to select the material. Now, it doesn't 
come the software didn't have freezer paper listed here that I could find so I made one by adding it because I wanted to make sure that I had it automatically setting to what I needed and it turned out that setting my cutter to one was enough to get through freezer paper it's really not that thick I don't know about this force thing here uh, it could be too much force who knows um, but I'm gonna give it a shot see what happens okay so I'm gonna set it to uh, see cut right I want it to cut when do I said no cut action cut right up here okay anyway we're going to go ahead and I'm going to just send it. I'm not going to reverse it or anything. So there's send. Okay. Now it's doing its little uh, auto knife adjusting there, setting it to one and all that. And now it's going to go start cutting. And this is so cool because it'd take me forever with an exacto knife to do this and it wouldn't be as precise. Well this thing is going to be really precise. Alright, I think we're at the end here. Yeah. My sticky must be not my sticky board is not that sticky anymore. I've used it up pretty good. All right, job complete, unload. All right, I'm gonna show you here real close up. See if you can see this. See how it just, it cut my design in there. I don't know if you can make that out. Now a lot of my freezer paper is coming off my sticky board, but that's okay, because I'm done now. Now what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to use my little tool that I have in here. It's this little baby right here and now I'm going to have to start picking off the parts uh, that I'm going to want to be uh, the painted parts on my t-shirt. So I'm going to go over to the next camera and um, you can watch me do some of that as well. Okay, so here I am at my little table here that I'm going to use for cutting. And my freezer paper wants to kind of come off my my sticky mat here so I want to make sure it doesn't just yet and here I have the printout from my laser printer because the only parts that I want to peel off of here are the ones that correspond to these black areas so I gotta be very careful not to be peeling off things that I don't that are the white areas so I'm gonna start let's say with this right here and That's coming off really nice and easy. Make sure nothing else comes off. I don't want to go too fast here. Sometimes I get carried away. I just want to get it, get her done, as they say, you know. And you got to be real careful not to, like that right there, want it to come up. All right, so I'm going to make sure. Okay, well, it should come up. How about that? All right, so that's got to come up too. See, so I want to make sure that I'm getting the right, the right stuff here. Now, I can keep on going here and here, but I'm just going to break this apart so I can focus on one area at a time because start getting too many things going on here. Be hard to, be hard to watch. It's coming up really nice and easy. I like that. Oop! No, you stay down there, little puppy. Little puppy on my horse. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tear this off here real quick so I can, I can get back to that later. Let's get some of this stuff off of here. So far, so good. Yeah, well, it looks like I got that anyway, whether I wanted to or not. Okay. Oh, that silhouette did a wonderful job. Okay, make sure that whole thing is supposed to come up, and it is. Okay, good. 
All right, look at the details. Wow. Is that supposed to come up? Yeah, it is. Okay. And there it is. All right. So now I got that. The next thing that's got to come up <coughs> are in betweens, the little stuff. So, see if I can get that, just that round part. I don't want that whole thing coming up, but the whole thing wants to come up. So, I'll just take it real easy. No, you stay down. I want this part only. There you go. Just that part. I want that middle part to stay there. Your little circle here. Come on. Okay. They call this weeding. You certainly learn really quick why. I tell you. It's not hard to do. It's just sometimes it's time consuming. I find it kind of relaxing. You know. If you're in a hurry. What in the world are you doing? Oh, I just, see I'm yapping and I just move that circle thing. Let me get that back in there. You can come out, but not that other one. Okay, see that little sucker there moved, but I think it's in a good spot. I'll just leave that right there. Okay, what else do I have? Oh yeah, okay, so I have this little bit right here. It's out of go. Details, just little tiny details. Get that off. Okay, whoops. All right. Okay. So there's my horse image that I'm going to put on my shirt. See? That's that. So everywhere that I removed it, that's where the paint's going to go through when I finally uh, put this template on my shirt. But now here's the next problem I have, and that is how in the world am I going to get this onto my shirt? If I peel this off, all these little tiny pieces are going to stay behind and I'll have to manually put them on my shirt one by one and that's not going to happen. They're just too small, I'll misalign them, whatever. There's this thing called uh, transfer tape, uh, yeah, transfer tape. And like I got a roll of transfer tape right here for example and what you do with this transfer tape is you roll it on top and it sticks on top and then you can take it and peel it off and all these things you, you want to come off with the transfer tape then you go over to whatever you want to apply this on and you seal it on and then when you peel the transfer tape you, you, you want this to stay behind but the only way that's going to happen is if this is if whatever this is going to stick on is stickier then the transfer paper is to the freezer paper and I really don't know if it is. Now to make this sticky on the shirt I have to iron it. It softens this plastic that comes on freezer paper and it will make it adhere to your shirt without leaving any sticky residue when you want to peel it off when you're done. The question is will it be strong enough to resist pulling off the shirt when I pull the transfer paper off and the second thing is is that when you're pulling the transfer tape off or putting the transfer tape on if you use just regular transfer tape and you put an iron to it it's going to melt all over your iron so you have to get the, the heat transfer uh, type of transfer tape so I'm going to cut enough to cover this I hope Yep, about right there. All right, so there we go. That, that should be enough. Of course, I'm more than enough. And it's got its own backing on here, so I'm going to have to peel the backing off before I put it on here. So I'm going to take the backing off of this sticky stuff. And it comes off pretty good. That was no problem at all. That came off real easy. Now I think the easiest way to do it is I'm going to curl it up like this and I'm going to apply it to the middle like so. Get my hand in there and kind of press it down and then press down and out. Alright. 
Okay, that's cool. Now, this is stuck to my freezer paper, and all I gotta hope for now is that when I peel it off, that it's gonna get all of it off my sticky mat. So let's see. Do it nice and gently. So far, so good. Look at that. Almost lost that one right there. Wow, so do it really. And if you're unsure, just kind of press like this, you know. Make sure it's getting all the little details. All the little stuff. There was a little one there I almost wanted to go by. by. Uh oh. Didn't pick that up. Let me do that again. And got it. Okay, we got that one there. It needs to stick more. Now I'm kind of happy that some of this stuff is trying to come off because when I adhere this iron this onto my shirt um, I'm gonna want that to come off so there we go alright and then of course I'm gonna put my protection back on my sticky mat so I could use it another day without it getting all kinds of lint and hair and stuff all over it which does happen in this messy studio office of mine alright next step is go to the ironing board with a shirt all right, so I got this black shirt here, and uh, let me see if you can see that. I hope you can see it. Okay, good. All right. Got on my ironing board here, and you know I, I purchased like you know a dozen of these black shirts um, online at a bulk wholesaler. Sometimes they. They sell a bunch of them, you know, they got like some irregularities to them or whatever. And so, you get them for like a buck and a half each, you know, which I think is pretty cool. I don't like to keep these tags, I get rid of those. Alright, so, there's my collar. I'm going to put it right between the, the arms here. Smooth this out the best I can. All right, take my iron here. I got it on super duper hot, like all the way cotton. I'm gonna give it a nice little press here. Take some of the moisture out of it. And uh, at the same time, give me a nice hot, warm surface to work with, which I think would probably just aid, aid what I'm doing here as far as trying to get that freezer paper to stick. Here, there's that image that I did, right? Yeah, okay. And I'm going to put it right where I want it. Usually they, they say about three fingers down from the collar, so you know, wherever you want it, just put where you want it. So I'm gonna center this best I can, right about there. That looks good. All right. Now this is supposed to take heat, so we're going to find out right now. But you just go ahead and just start ironing this thing. Let me get a little bit closer here so you can see that. Make sure it's not burning that plastic. Whoa! Looks like my wife had it on, uh, what do you call it, that water coming out? That drives me, oh no, there you go. So we had water, it's got water coming out of this thing. Uh, you do not want water coming out. Hope that doesn't cause me any problems. Anyway, make sure I get it nicely ironed here. Plastic is not melting. That is why I bought this particular kind. I want to make sure this freezer paper does not peel off. Heat that really good here. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and start peeling off the transfer tape while it's nice and hot. Oh, wow, baby, look at that. Yes, that works fantastic. Look at that, everybody. Look, 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 look. All right. Check. 
that out. Everything released. This stuff is great. I'm gonna leave a good review on Amazon for the Bright Idea stuff. That's not the Frisco, that's the Bright Idea. I think it's called Bright Ideas. Anyway, now that I've got that on there, it's time to paint. Okay, now what I've done is I've taken my t-shirt here and inside of the t-shirt I put cardboard so that anything I do on top here will not bleed through to the other side of my shirt because that would just not be fun. All right, I got all my details here. I'm super excited that the freezer paper all the all the stuff iron on and, and that tack paper that that uh, transfer thing worked fantastic. I mean, I'm so stoked. I will definitely be reordering that again. Now, I got to be careful because freezer paper doesn't stick that well. I mean, it's 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 on here, but it will come off really really easy. So I have to be gentle as I'm painting on this. Now, if I was going to do a bleach thing, which I'll probably do in another video, uh, I should be okay. But since I'm actually going to be physically touching this thing over and over again, I'm afraid I might lift some of these up. So I got to be careful. I also have some other fabric paints that I bought. And I just, you know what, I'll probably just go ahead and use these. And I got some brushes, so that's what I'm probably going to go ahead and use. You know, I'm gonna start doing some painting here. Let's start doing some painting. Okay, so how about some some red here? Get that stuff to get on their thing here, and I'm just going to jot that down and try not to move your little detailed piece there, like I have right here. That's why it's better to it's better to go down with like a sponge. But of course you can also end up lifting up pieces that way too, so I guess there's no perfect. Alright. Red fiery eyes, right? How about how about a red? Let's see what else should I go red with here? Okay, how about the nose area here, huh? Yeah. Let's get some of that going. Colors. I want bright, vibrant colors. And it's like I'm going to have to just douse this with layers of paint to get what I want. I might just heat fast it and then go over it again. I don't know if that might not even work right. Might even make it worse. Well, look at that psychedelic horse. All right.
Okay, because the paint is still pretty wet, um, I'm not going to put the iron right on it, but actually, I'm just going to hold it above just so that it can get some of that heat, enough for me to start peeling off the freezer paper. So I just kind of want to get it where it's dry enough that um, I won't be smearing paint all over the place. And then I will put some parchment paper over it and color fast it by ironing on top of it for a little bit. Okay, now I didn't thoroughly dry it because, um, you know, look, I got some pretty heavy paint there. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this parchment paper on because I don't care about getting paint on my parchment paper and I'm pretty sure it won't stick and if it does, oh well. So I'm going to just carefully lay that parchment paper down on that paint for the camera moving around. Okay, here we go. I'm going right on it. Well, and I can hear that paint sizzling underneath there and it's smearing all over the place. Look at that. Woo! That's going to be kind of cool. Psychodelic. Psychodelic Ricky. We're going to color fast this puppy. I might have invented something whole new. What do you think? Called a mess. Okay, I think it's hot enough for me to start peeling off that freezer paper and then I'll put another parchment paper on top of it to seal it. So we'll go right into that. Okay, I'm carefully peeling up the paper now. Um, I'm going to have to go get my tweezer thing for this. I just grabbed a steak knife. That'll work just as good. I'm going to get underneath the freezer paper just so that I can get a little bit up and then I'm just going to start pulling. All right. Got an interesting look to it. It's kind of ghost colored. It wasn't opaque. All right. See, the, the blue is just kind of faint. Um, the colors are slightly faint because it's. That's cool. That is cool though. I'm holding the camera at the same time with one hand while doing this with another. So I apologize for camera shake. It's one of those things where So that I can make sure you guys get to see what I'm doing. But unfortunately I don't have anybody here to hold this camera for me. A big piece. Hmm. It's a cool horse design. I'm gonna make another shirt with it, and that's when I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the bleach. I like that method. 
Okay, the paint got underneath the little pupil there, so he doesn't have a pupil. I'm a little bummed about that. So it's soaked through the sides of the freezer paper. But overall, it did pretty good. It's got some awesome design here. So, we got all this to get off. This was slow, tedious, and I couldn't get it as opaque as I wanted. Okay, I think I got it all. So, there's my design there, folks. That's pretty cool. That is a neat looking shirt. Let me get this stuff off here. So now I need to, again, I need to color fast that so let me go get some more parchment paper just gently lay that parchment paper down on there like so I don't know how long to do this for but as long as my shirt don't catch on fire I'll just Take my sweet time here and make sure I get all the areas around. So I think that's it. I think that's done. And there you go, folks. That's my t shirt experiment. I hope you like this video. If so, please give me a thumbs up. Please click the uh, subscribe and the notification, share with your friends, and I'm going to do another experiment shortly. So this was all in fun. Hope you learned something. I certainly did as I uh, went about doing this. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye. Okay, well, here's the finished result, and uh, I think it looks pretty good for my first experiment, but... I do have a little bit of a problem with it that I'm going to address in my second experiment video in the future. You're definitely going to want to look for that video. Uh, but take a look at this. If you see here, the colors are not as opaque as I'd like them to be. I could still see a lot of black within the colors themselves. So in the second video, I'm going to try an experiment where I'm going to put white paint down first, the fabric paint like I used here. I'm going to put white paint down. I'm going to dry it. Then I'm going to re-stencil it back up again and I'm going to then put the colors on top of the white. So the colors will be on a white base and I want to see how that comes out. So we'll do that in an experiment two video but for right now I think it's a pretty cool looking shirt. I like it. I'm going to go ahead and wear it. And I'll see you in the next video. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it and it helps the channel. And click that notification bell. See you next time. Thanks for watching.